And then, like, you get to a point and you're just out of ideas, and so you just kind of keep in the same. I don't yeah. know how your brain can surprise itself. I know. Because it, it sets up a, such a twist in, in the plot sometimes. Like, how the fuck did I not see it coming? Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, I hear the music. Okay. Playing. I think we yeah, should get maybe get started on Screw this. Uh, yeah, let's get started on this episode here. Uh, welcome to the Video Reformation Podcast. I'm Ben Oliver. I'm Justin Plant. We are the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your guides to practicing effective video for business. We're like the Patches O'Houlihan to your average Joe's kickball team. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, dodge. Uh, I never saw that. Uh, it's a fun one. It's worth saying. Um, before we jump into our topic today, which is video for internal comms, mm -hmm. that's what the kids are calling it these days, a uh, little housekeeping first, as usual, keep those topic requests coming. And by keep them coming, I mean, we had a good little like surge in topic requests, and then they, they kind of dropped off a little bit. Uh, we could keep coming up with these ideas, but we'll get more topics like video for internal comms if we rely on us to keep coming up with these topics. So let us know what you want to hear about. We would love to talk about it. I'm sorry to announce that, that we have a new sponsor this week. We, we weren't able to, to keep our previous sponsor. We'll hear from them later in the uh, episode, but our new sponsor this week is Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop. So, we are excited to have Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop. Yeah. We're just a little disappointed that... I just wish sometimes they'd be more of a... You know, like, when they're so local like that, it feels like we're a small podcast. Right. Right. Yeah. Unless they're a chain. Um, what I know of Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop is they have one location. But they're not local. Oh, okay. So that could be something. Las I mean, Vegas? if you think about it... Um, Somewhere in Florida. That's all I'm going to say right now. So, um, is this the French version? Is this the topic du jour? Topic du today? jour. Topic du jour today is video for internal comms or communications for the lay, lay person there. Um, now, we often talk about video for marketing, video for sales, video for customers. It's true. This is a little bit of a departure from typical. Yeah. And, and I think I think the reason that we focus so much on marketing, sales, and customer success is because they're kind of those core revenue teams. Mm -hmm. And internal comms is more of a, to me, internal comms is more of a catch-all for the other ways that business can use video. Right. That isn't necessarily customer-facing. It's, it's employee facing. And that's why it's, it's like you have the resources already. So maybe why not use them to your advantage in another yeah. way? Yeah. And I, th and I think for any, any company who's investing in, in using video to communicate externally should invest the same amount in communicating. Or some. In, in well, uh, yeah. Um, oh, what, what was the name of that? Remember it was when we were up in our upstairs office, we were sending around a video about a company who, just created their own studio in-house for just internal communications. Mm -hmm. It was like BASF or something kind of yeah. big. Yeah. But yeah. It might have been SAS or Lenovo. Could have been SAS. Could have yeah. been SAS. Um, but I think that's the... I, I, I imagine we'll, we're planning to get to this at some point, but you know, for us, we've got you know four or five people on the team, right? Um, Internally, so it's it's easy for us to all kind of stay on the same four, page. Four or five? Did we? Did you forget? It, it depends on whether. So we just hired someone. If you're listening to this now, or when you're <laughs> listening to this, we will have five people. As we're recording this, we have four, five. <laughs> we we have four. Uh, an offer has been accepted for five. Um, but like companies with 500 employees don't talk about like yeah 500 501 right like yeah. i mean that's kind of that's kind of the way i was the the point i was i was getting toward is is like on larger companies it it, it very quickly becomes hard for everything to be communicated yeah um and so i think that's that's one of the just big picture advantages is once you get outside of a single office it becomes virtually impossible to communicate with everybody at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can think about, you know, maybe having 250 people in the same office and you have an all hands meeting in, you know, whatever part of the office is designated for that, that's fine. But once you add that second office, I mean, it's, it's, you might as well be using video and you can, and, and we're talking very broadly about video here. This is not necessarily 
pre-recorded, well-produced, high production value yeah, video. We're talking about live one-to-one video, live one-to-many video, uh, asynchronous, yeah. a live stream, a webcam, uh, Zoom. I mean, Zoom and Google Meet. Those things all fall under video for internal communications. Yeah. Do you, um, do you feel like we're going to go in a live and asynchronous, like both directions in this conversation? Or is this? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it certainly applies. I, because, because to me, I, I think there are ways for executive leadership to communicate to a lot of employees either way, right? Either through kind of a, an all hands meeting that is live that everybody's expected to watch and maybe each each department or team or whatever gets together in a conference room and watches it Mm -hmm. on one screen together or they're all watching on their individual screens or it is more of an asynchronous thing and everybody's emailed the video because it is a you know quarter four results kind of thing right and it doesn't have to be alive but you know live and and i think we've talked about this before one of the benefits of live streaming is you get to do that q a interaction so oftentimes um you know when someone in the executive suite is is you know, communicating that they want to be able to answer employee questions and things like that. And you get to do that with, with a live thing. But again, yeah. it doesn't have to be. You could even take a live thing, a live streamed announcement or meeting or presentation. And, you know, anybody who couldn't view it live can then watch it recorded. Yeah, there's something about the live aspect to that um, that just brings, it literally brings everybody together. But um, so my, my wife started a new, a new role uh, not too long ago. And they have a, they have like, they've got to have like 50,000 employees all over the country and they have a all company meeting like once a month. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of feel like you're part of something, uh, especially being from home. But, um, but they also brought a, Pharrell was on for some reason, just sure. like saying, Hey, yeah. keep up the good work or something. Yeah. And, and when it's live, that sort of experience is real because you're sharing that with other people. Yeah. But if you, but if if they just sent that video out to all fifty thousand people separately to watch whenever they wanted, news would get around before that anybody watched it, and mm-hmm. it'd be like, oh, well, where's Pharrell? Let me skip ahead or yeah. whatever. And yeah. So there's there's benefits to having that live for sure. Well, and I think uh, in those larger companies too, if an executive is going to make some kind of big announcement, something like that, you want to be able to do it live so that everybody does hear it at the same time. Mm -hmm. But as an executive using video, you have an opportunity to communicate with your employees more often using asynchronous. Yes. Right. So, so what may have been something that you only did in those big quarterly or monthly things, you could send out a weekly message Mm -hmm. that you just record, you know, you script out, you record on your own webcam, you know, every Friday morning or Thursday night and it goes out to everybody Friday morning, something like that. Hey, thanks for, you know, thanks for the work, everybody this week. You know, we closed big deals and and this, this, and this, you know, those kinds of things that don't have to be live. I think it provides a lot of opportunity for, you know, for the upper levels of management to engage with, with a large number of employees. Yeah. But I think there's, there's value in it also on small teams. I mean, I think about, especially with remote work now, I mean, some of the research that I did for this episode, um, one of the blog posts was, was dated March 12th of this year. And it was like describing remote work Mm -hmm. for like people who weren't used to working remotely. Two weeks later, we all knew everything in that blog post. Yeah by experience. Um, but even with our small team, I mean, we find a lot of value in our optional morning check-ins mm-hmm. where it's an opportunity, even though we're all in the same County or when you're listening to this episode, same region. Um, that's that fifth employee, yeah. right? She doesn't live in Durham County. Um, but even though we're all we're all here in the same area, we are all working from our homes. It gives a little bit of of connection. It, it's you know some some people are are you know tend to feel isolated or get unmotivated working from home things like that. Yeah, and so starts- having that having that that I I think for some people it's a, I think it can be a lot of things to a lot of people. I guess it can be an accountability thing. It can be a social engagement thing. It can be a Every day, at least I know I'm on the same page with my team. For me, it thing. starts my brain in that mode. You know, yeah. like like skiing, I kind of get into that groove, and now I'm I'm yeah. finding my way. Yeah, if I've got stuff that I just want to crank out quickly, um, I'll do it between 
eight thirty and nine, and then once we hop on that thing at nine, like I feel like I'm in my structured day. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, sometimes that thing is five minutes long, um, but it's just important, you know, even for our small team, just to kind of have the opportunity to check in mm-hmm. uh, with each other. Um, I feel like we're kind of jumping around. I, I, I think we could put more structure yeah. into this conversation. Let's do that. Um, why don't we why don't we kind of focus uh, focus in on this kind of management to employee sorry uh, this uh, let's come back to management to employee let's focus on like employee to employee okay um, and I think that's one where you've got the opportunity for for the asynchronous pre-recorded type video the thing that that you capture you send out to one people or, or mm-hmm. multiple people. I know this is something that you do a lot, um, even with prospects, right? And so, I mean, there's a video selling, but like you'll walk through a proposal yeah, with a prospect. And I think there are lots of opportunities to avoid. I, I, and I, and I think, I assume, I've always assumed that you do that because you could write a really long email yeah. Outlining a proposal. Yeah, which and then sending a document. A one page proposal. <laughs> exactly. So so why not send the one page proposal along with kind of your what you would have delivered yeah. as you were walking through it live, but you let them you you have the opportunity to edit it if you mess sure. something up, right? So employee to employee, there are a lot of those opportunities too where if it would take a long email mm-hmm. or or a phone call but you'd want to share a screen. Why not organize your thoughts, put it into this pre-recorded video. Mm-hmm. You can show, you can share your screen, right? You can walk through yep. what you're talking about to someone so that you can communicate it more effectively. And and you can do that outside of regular business hours too. Sure. So if you're working with, with remote teams who are maybe even in different time zones, things like that, you get to kind of have your half of the meeting almost, mm-hmm. right? Your half of mm-hmm. the conversation and then send it to them, and then they can view it. On the can. Y- yes, Wh- whenever they want. <laughs> sure. Yes, whenever and wherever so what, they want. So, like, let, let's say we're you're we're on the same team. We're, we're both account managers, and we have a presentation coming up to the other pods in our mm-hmm. account management team. Uh, there's an example where I could walk you through the updates I've made to the the document. And ask my two questions and send that over to you and just say I need this by five. I need your answers by five or something. Yeah. yeah. Where else might you? Oh, well, I, I, you know, I think there's so much collaboration nowadays, especially in our field, but but in in so many fields, it's teams of people working on the same deliverable, uh-huh. whether that's a report or a proposal or. Uh, a marketing video or a brochure or whatever mm-hmm. with and different specialties and, yeah and so instead of uh, you know one level of that is maybe all having access to the document in InDesign mm-hmm. right or Premiere Pro or, or something like that but but being able to actually walk through hey here are some of the edits I made mm-hmm. right and just kind of like circle those yeah. highlight those yep. instead of just saying document revised yeah. Off to you. Look at the bottom left. There's a new shadow. <laughs> yeah, and, and and so you can actually show, and, and I think that's I think that's something we kind of take for granted with video, but but needs to be hammered home often, is that video allows you to show and tell, mm-hmm. and so so you get to tell someone why you made a change to something while you're showing them the change that you made, and. It's real easy. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this would replace, you know, in the olden times when we could like come like over to someone. Yes, when we could come <laughs> over to someone else's desk or yeah. cubicle or whatever, you know, and just look over somebody's shoulder, or you could both sit there and work on it together. Because that's just not happening right now. There's there's this more immediate need for streamlining those kinds of communications when you are in different places because mm-hmm. it just adds so much. I mean, we we see it with our editing. Right where where it's like you know the editor has to get to a certain point and then share it and then get feedback and then they read that feedback and then they make some changes where usually that would just be like somebody looks over the shoulder for a half an hour you make a dozen changes and instead of taking like six hours back and forth yeah it's just done in thirty yeah. minutes um, but you know and, and I think that's where you could do some live streaming 
of your screen, right? I did that with one of our one of our freelance editors recently, where he was working on I don't even remember what he was working on, but but he's big into live streaming. So he actually streamed. He used one of his professional cameras for his camera, and then he put uh, his screen as one of the other inputs, and he could just switch back and forth so that as he moved things around on the Patrick, timeline, he just yeah. And he would just toggle between the yeah. two, but then, like, and I, I really can't remember what he was working on, but um, it's really handy setup, though. It, it is. It's it's really nice because to be able to view on my twenty four inch monitor what's effectively on his twenty four inch mm -hmm. monitor is a lot closer to sitting at the same desk. Yeah. Than if he were sending me some, you know, exporting something, sending it to me on Frame.io, having me, you know, make notes on it. He reads those notes. He makes those changes. It allowed a conversation mm -hmm. that was a back and forth, and it was live. Um, so I think that's a great, you know, a great kind of employee to employee within a team hmm. kind of communication opportunity. I like that a lot. Like I, m most of the time when I'm thinking about live video, I'm thinking of the shitty webcams that come with Max. Mm -hmm and the ability to share my screen but but that that of like <laughs> it i i mean it is there's something to be said for for being able to see a full resolution live yeah like changing screen as opposed it's to like something pixelated and uh, or, yeah, yeah yeah and i'm sure by the end of the episode i'll remember what we were working on specifically but like i was just like it, i mean it was it was kind of cool yeah. Like, and it was just so much more engaging and it just felt, it, it felt. I, feel, I wonder if something like that is going to be more accessible soon. I, I mean, I think so. I think that's the big, you know, COVID conversation is, is how many, how like many of these. And collaboration tools are, it was everything that's getting funded right now. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. I mean, but, but, you know, we talked on our last episode about, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that was something that, that I think was probably earlier in development, but because of COVID, it was then, something yeah. that, that they needed to just really, uh, really escalate yeah. quickly. And so they brought, you know, they opened up beta. They did some good advertising, things like that. They got some good press. Um, but I don't think it would have happened on that timeline if it weren't for COVID. And um, I think what you're going to see is as we're kind of into the second wave of COVID, not like second wave of infections, but like now that we know that it's six months later or seven months later, whatever, whatever it is. And we're not like back to normal, mm -hmm. like we all thought we would be. Now it is about those solutions that are kind of assuming that this is the new normal. And how can we, how can we apply innovation and creative thinking and technology and, technology and change yeah you know, the way that we work. Um, and that's why you do see all of that, all of that funding going into healthcare and collaboration tools. Mm -hmm. But it, it is things like that, that are, that are for a lot of people going to be the death of the office going into the office. Um, I think it's exciting. I, I think it's just, it's, it's one of the silver linings you can find with the whole COVID thing is this just like, we're probably going to look back and see this, this boost in, um, Innovation, for lack of a better word, but Do but you feel I, like productivity I think is I I think changing? I think long term productivity will change. I think it's something that we noticed on this. I, I I think maybe it's increased productivity as a function of increased efficiency. And I and I only draw on personal experience for that because when we so we did kind of a tiered remote work when COVID first started. Yeah, because you have kids. Um, and because David's wife works in public health, you two were the first to work from home, mm -hmm. which meant that half of us were working from home and half of us were still working in the office. And, and what was nice, at least for me, about that transition was that it set a little bit of a foundation for how we work together and how we distributed tasks. Mm -hmm. Because, and I, and I think this is a problem that a lot of collaborative and creative teams get into, is they end up working a lot together on things that could be done more individually. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's fun to collaborate. It's fun to you know throw ideas at other people and see what they throw back. Um, but it's, it's not necessarily ever efficient to do that. And I think one of the things that we found was how to distribute work 
so that we could all work more independently. And we quickly found that more stuff was actually getting done because it didn't take three of us to look at a script. Mm -hmm. It didn't take... Um, it took one person to do it and then share that. You know, and, and then two people to review it independently, make some final comments. The original person you know, accepted or rejected those comments and then it was ready to go. It, instead of three people sitting in a conference room staring at one screen trying to like each write their own sentence and a revision of a script like it, it just yeah. it may seem like it takes but in, it takes longer but in terms of the actual like person hours yeah it takes a third as long when you're able to have that back and forth and so i i think that's going to be the long-term increase in productivity of people working from home instead of in an office is that they have to be more deliberate with their time and they're going to find ways to, to be more efficient, and, and that's where the productivity comes from. Not to get too big picture and meta. No, no, I just, we did meander uh, away, but I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a reality of, of part of the reason why we're talking about this. Yeah. It's about building efficiencies and, and being able to better collaborate with, with your employees, with your peers, with your bosses. I, th I think... <clears throat> with, with other external teams. Even. Yeah, I mean, when I think about some of the tropes of like office communication like you've written here because i don't remember writing it but you've written here like instead of sending a hey fuckhead did you dot 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 kind of email uh, right which is usually like as per my last email yeah <laughs> right like they're they're all those kind of you know office communication tropes that we're all yeah just poking this to the top of your inbox yeah. which is like hey fuckhead did yeah. you forget to respond to me um i i think i think this combination of being able to communicate asynchronously and and in real time through video i don't know i think it it kind of like the technology of email almost like depersonalizes communication mm -hmm. to a certain extent yeah to where you are writing as per my last email or like clearly you asshole yeah right like We've learned because we're like hitting send on something and then it's gone, right? We 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 can be kind of dickish in emails and it because it feels a little because our face isn't attached to it. Sure. And so I think with all of the Zoom meetings and and the asynchronous videos and all of those things that are happening so much more now and will continue to happen, I think maybe it brings some of that personality and like personal responsibility back to it. Yeah. Where. You don't have to say, hey, fuckhead, you missed the point. Or if you say of, it or, in person, like in video, but you're smiling, it's... Just... Well, yeah, and that's another good point. It's like, I've, I, it took me forever to, to figure this out, but like, you read emails based on the mood you're in. Yeah. Not, not the mood that the writer was in. And there's so much vague language without the nonverbal yeah. communication stuff, where I could write... As per our last email, we whatever, which is not me trying to be a dick. It's just like, I know we haven't talked in a long time, but the last time we emailed about this, yeah. you know, like sometimes you're just trying to be professional. And so you write something that isn't how you would say it. But, you know, if you were doing a video, you'd probably say like, hey, last time we talked, uh, we whatever, right? And, and all of a sudden, like hearing that tone and seeing their face and even with that word choice, like, it just comes like there's no ambiguity there right. so you don't get don't have to assign like your own mood or your own fears or insecurities or whatever on like there is no reading between the lines because everything that's missing between the lines is there in that nonverbal yep. communication i'm really getting on board with video for internal comms the more we talk about this <laughs> why don't we take a quick sponsor break okay and then come back and talk a little bit more about how executives might use communication tools like this um and then even some like training and onboarding type yeah. stuff all right and now a word from our sponsor drain the swamp tattoo shop remember tramp stamps all we do is trump stamps that's right drain the swamp tattoo shop is your one-stop shop for trump related lower back tattoos want bill bar on your lumbar doral on your dorsal region mitch mcconnell on your coccyx yes we can Wait, no, MAGA. MAGA. And don't worry about the quality of our work because we only hire the best people. Besides, if you ever become dissatisfied with your Trump stamp, just come back after four years and we'll forget it ever happened. Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop, located in the strip mall across the street from Mar-a-Lago. 
wow, they got a they got a great location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is the lower back of Florida, so um, there's a lot of available real estate around there. But um, yeah, I think they've been in business for about three and a half, four years. Um, hard to say. Uh, how current economic uh, conditions are affecting their mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we may know more in November. Um, didn't they go bankrupt before, like a while ago? Yeah, they've gone bankrupt several times, actually. Mm-hmm. Originally, they were um, a casino and uh, went bankrupt. And uh, then they were a university. I mean, it's just a protection went, thing. Yeah, probably. yeah. It's, it's not to avoid paying people. It's, it's taking advantage of the way the law is written. Um. But uh, but yeah, I you know I I wonder I think I think in a couple months they're gonna know whether they have to pivot their business to like altering tattoos that they, that they've made over the last several years, um, or it's interesting because I was whether about to get a Betsy DeVos on my voice box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but you'd you'd call her Betsy DeVos. The voice. Vox. Vox is better. Vox is better. Latin. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Six years of Latin, baby. All right. So welcome to our new sponsor, Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop. So let's switch. I I think unless there's anything else to talk about more with employee to employee communication. I'm sure there's plenty that can be done that we haven't discussed. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I mean, we've we've even used the like the daily check in, but just, you know, Zoom meetings. Right, it is the biggest. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's the most obvious. Yeah, like that's just happening now. But if we had done this episode in February or March, I'm sure we would be talking more about like you know how you can actually communicate in those things, mm-hmm. and how you can make your setup look yeah. good, and like how many books to put in the background, and you know those kinds yeah. of things that we've just all figured out. So what about executive or or maybe even more appropriately management communication to employees? Mm-hmm. Because I think there's a lot of opportunities. Like, I see a lot of opportunities for, like, sales managers, especially sales managers who have, like, remote sales teams to use video, you know, again, live videos for, like, team meetings, Mm -hmm. but then be able to kind of manage their individual salespeople through live and asynchronous video. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think think it's also worth discussing that there's a lot of – uh, analytics that you can get in terms of like your employees' engagement with those videos yes, too. Yes, that's that I would see help a lot of benefits on that side of it. Just to know who's actually engaging. I mean, sure, you can tell if someone is checked in on on Zoom meetings, right? Yeah, um, because they're engaging or they're like at least there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like sending the asynchronous stuff to employees. Like if, if I when you were in sales. Did you get a lot of benefit or like um, satisfaction from being called out and said, "I want to draw attention to what Ben did this week. He did this, this, and this." Yeah, and- that's that's fantastic. I mean, that that's um, uh, yeah. I think it's important. I, yeah. I think that's a big uh, a, a big piece of it. And I think like a, I don't think it's too much to ask for some managers to send something out like that weekly, mm-hmm. whether it kicks the week off or it closes the week, but even daily, like saying. Man, Jacob hit, you know, 34 calls today. He had two demos. Like, I want to, you know, just give him props for that. Maybe you hold up an award each day or something. Like, for sales manager, I think that you have to – when I was a sales manager, I I managed interns, so it wasn't like a real job. (laughs) But I had to interact – tell people that. I had to interact with them every day. Otherwise, they would slip away and and – Stop drinking the Kool Aid, essentially, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's an important part. Is you have to you have to remind them how great the product is sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if well, and I, not, I, it's more. funny because because when you asked me about the recognition, I had some flashbacks to some of those weekly calls, and and with with one or two of the organizations that I worked for, those calls were were terrifying because that was where you kind of uh, reported your activity mm-hmm. to your team. So, like, how many net new conversations did you have the previous day? How many cold prospects did you uh, go into? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that can be uh, nerve-wracking. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're just logging it in Salesforce or something like that. You're, you're sharing <laughs> to the whole team. And, and, and it, it's funny because in a managerial of sorts position now, I get wanting to 
to have that level of accountability. And I see how that that should often be kind of an empowering uh, kind of experience. But I think so often for junior salespeople, it's really terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they realize they can lie and then everything's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, but those moments of recognition are, are so key to, uh, you know, if, if a morning call was, um, Hey, Justin, uh, Justin got, uh, one new client started today or yesterday and brought in one new contract. And, you know, Anthony uh, had four new prospect conversations yesterday and David uh, brought in a new signed contract. There could be eight people on the team. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you don't have to, you know, like it's not you're not saying that like and nobody else did shit yesterday. Right. It's just like, you know, it's implied. (laughs) But 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 that's that is part of the motivating factor and that's why you hire people who are competitive yeah. in sales yeah because you want you want them to want to be called out yeah for good things i also think there's a lot of of train like one-on-one training and employee betterment isn't the right but but like enrichment, enrichment like like just getting better at your craft that you can do as a sales manager with video too, right? That's what I was going to say, yeah. Because, um, so I was never a sales manager, but I was a mentor for new hires. And that was a really interesting experience. And it was, it was also a very, it was also very empowering for me as a sales rep to have been perceived as somebody who does it like almost as a model for how we want our new people to do it. But it, it gave me the opportunity to, and the confidence to share some of the things that I'd figured out on my own, mm-hmm. right? Some of the things that weren't in the sales training, but like things that I had figured out that had worked. And we would literally drive around in a car together mm-hmm. and go to sales calls. That isn't happening now. Right. So, you know, I'd, I'd hate to, to completely lose the opportunity to sit in on a sales call with one of my mentees or um, to lose the opportunity to to say, um, hey, I know you're uh, you're really good at cold prospecting, but you could leverage your partnerships more. Let me share some of the thing. Right. And you could do that at 2 a.m. if you want to do sure. record that video and then send it to that individual salesperson. But you can also, you know, come up with themes for the week or the month, those kinds of things that, that you could record and kind of drip out to your team over the course of a week. If you wanted to focus, like we're going to do a big prospect on or a big week focusing on cold prospecting, mm-hmm. then you could over the weekend or the week prior record five different videos that kind of each hit a different point and send that out to your team at 730 in the morning, you know, each day and, and just let them watch it and, and learn from you. Personally, whatever this says about me, fine. But like, <laughs> if, if, like when I was in sales, if I saw my manager calling, I might let it ring. <laughs> but if I saw his email pop up with a message where I wasn't, I didn't have any sort of like threat, if you want to call yeah. it that, of like, am I going to get yelled at? Does he have a question? Did I do something wrong? Mm-hmm. But like just that asynchronous aspect, I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's see what he has to say. It's really, it's a lot easier for me to engage with yeah. my with my mentor, my boss. Um, you know, I think doing role plays and uh, one-to-one, right, with each yeah. person on the team about a new prospecting activity, right, that you might try to I, incorporate. I think... And then record it and send the best one to everybody and say, watch what Jerry did. Yeah, I, I, I think that's such an opportunity. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure sales teams are, I hope, sales teams are doing this because so many of salespeople's conversations are happening over Zoom and Google Meet. Uh, and it there needs to be additional training for how to sell to people through a webcam rather than in person. Mm-hmm. And you're absolutely right because one of the things I always hated role plays. Um, but one of the things that, that just didn't, I wasn't able to suspend my disbelief enough <laughs> to, to think that my manager had like real objections. Yeah. Right. So like there was all, cause to me sales, and I think this is part of the reason why ultimately I failed in it. But like, I liked the chess match of sales, mm-hmm. like the sitting across from a table from someone and basically 
overcoming their objections through like logic and turning something they had said earlier against them. I, you know, not in a like, you know, antagonistic kind of way, but like for me, it was, it was more about overcoming the objections than it was about finding a solution. Um, and I think a lot of that was the sales training that I went through. None of the sales training I went through ever positioned what I was doing was finding a solution to a problem that my prospect had. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamentally yeah. what sales is. They have a problem. They may not even know it yet. And you have a solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. And none of the, the training I went through um, uh, taught me that part of it. And so, and so it was just so hard for me to to trust that my sales manager, uh, you know, actually had the objections they had in those role plays. But for some reason, I feel like if we were doing it live one to one over a video, I, I think there's I don't know. I have to think that there's like something that takes it just enough out of reality. Mm hmm that I might be easier able to suspend my disbelief on that. And, and that's a big, that's a big assumption, but, but there needs to, the bigger point there is, I mean, sales managers need to be training their salespeople on how to sell through video calls, mm -hmm. through video meetings. And, you know, you're also using them to communicate with your salespeople more. So it, it, it's kind of a, it's not really so much that it's a no brainer. It's just a tremendous opportunity for sales managers and sales mm -hmm. leaders to, to adapt to the world, the un, these uncertain times. On a grander scale from j not just management, but executive levels, um, I think communication is like, if you're not doing those live Zoom meetings that we discussed in the beginning, these are, I mean, great opportunities where you can just send out the, that two minute update on, on the quarter, um, where things are, what man, what, you know, what departments are, thriving which ones aren't yeah. um what else what else might executives like i know uh but you remember uh the dinosaur guy uh-huh <laughs> we did some like quarterly things for his investors yeah uh, it wasn't necessarily to employees but it was to investors um so just doing videos like that yeah i mean i mean and he was doing it asynchronous back then the delivery was not as uh, engaging or, or yeah, but I, mean, I still, say, but. I, st I still, I mean, I think he was right. I mean, he's been right about a lot of things um, over the years. And I think his instinct to, to present to his shareholders uh, face to face as much as he could was better than just sending out a quarterly report. Mm -hmm. He could provide context Mm -hmm. um, and direction and insights and yes, showing and telling. Um, there's only so much that, that a quarterly or annual report is going to share. Um, and, and oftentimes um, those annual reports are presented at annual shareholder meetings and those things are also happening less or they're happening virtually. So why not? pre-prepare but like you know pre-record some of that messaging mm -hmm. because you get to uh, kind of like what you were saying about seeing an email from your sales manager instead of a phone call like you don't have to be in the moment when it's asynchronous right. i mean that is very much its definition you can right? edit like but you can edit your response or redo it yeah um you know i also think about about times with clients where where it could have been easier to discuss something over a phone call or in a meeting or over a video chat. But I, I love the benefit of, of going through and writing an email to organize my thoughts, yeah. right? And so oftentimes I'll send the email, but sometimes I'll get through the email and be like, I can explain this, but like now that I've thought it through, yeah, I can explain this better if I just record a video. You know, I can remind myself of my bullet points over here. Sure. Um, and then at least I've thought this out and I've used the the, the actual tactile experience of writing it out and, and forming my thoughts and those kinds of yeah. things to kind of prepare for the argument. Um, and yes, it is nice to have have sometimes have an argument where you get to lob sure. your your argument and then wait for them to respond. Pile stuff on top and of then, it. Right? And then you get to take your time to then lob back your... So it is a little bit less confrontational. Um, but, you know, you could also... 
but uh, organize all those thoughts and then invite them to a one-on-one video meeting and at least you're going into it knowing what points you want to talk mm -hmm. about and you've prepared kind of your supporting arguments things like that a benefit of that is that uh, another benefit is that instead of just being in the moment and having that confrontational nature that it just presents itself in that type of scenario yeah you can actually consider and say you know what i might be wrong Maybe mm -hmm. I should look at it another way. Instead of just coming at it and or against it, you get to process it for a little bit longer. Yeah. And that can be really valuable. And I think and maybe I'm just speaking about myself here, but I think a lot of a lot of people get defensive because they they're like flustered in the moment. Like they mm -hmm. don't know how to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that live in the moment conversation, like the emotions start to take over and then like you like you get angry or you get kind of, you know, despondent or I mean, whatever your reaction is, fight, flight, whatever. But but yeah, I, I, I think that that just, you know, e even if you went into a live confrontational conversation more prepared, um, you. I think you're just going to get a better result out of it. Yes. And, and I think you're able to say, you know what, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah. When you're able to when think about it cool instead of, <laughs> you know, instead of like when you're already kind of on your heels mm -hmm. and then somebody throws something at you and you're like, well, shit, that makes sense. But there's got to be a reason. Wait, I didn't think of that. Yeah. And and yeah. Yeah. And that happens. I mean, I you know, I think I think we, you know, I put that in the context of like us and our clients. But I, I think that's a lot of I mean, because essentially the closest thing that you and I have to bosses are our clients. Sure. Right. Um, we don't necessarily have that kind of power dynamic. We like to lead our clients a lot. But um, but I mean, the, the there's a lot of that power dynamic between employees and management mm -hmm. um, also. Mm -hmm. And so there can be those conflicts and, and conflict is something that is not, you know, to be avoided at all costs. Right. Conflict is what creates growth and, yeah. and all those. Kind of, and so when you talk about mentoring, when you talk about sales leadership, when you talk <clears> about sales <throat> managers, there, there's going to be occasional conflict there because they want you, the good ones, they want you to, to grow. Mm -hmm. And so they want to be able to have those role plays, those conversations, yeah. so that you can fuck up internally in a, safe environment. In, in a safe environment instead of, you know, potentially losing a deal mm -hmm. because you didn't see something coming. And I mean, it's like, it, it's, it's practice. Yeah. Right? I mean, I remember one of my favorite parts of sales was, was also the hearing myself say something, you know, describing a feature a slightly different way one time. Like it just came out of my mouth differently. I was like, ooh, that's a really good way to explain that. Mm -hmm. And so that became part of my talk new, track, yeah. the, right? But I was using, I was using actual prospect conversations to have those where I could have leaned more into the role plays with my sales manager mm -hmm. and with my sales team, you know, and, and do those back and forths. I might have figured it out earlier if I'd done, you know, 10 more internal role plays sure. a week. Um, maybe role plays aren't just for sales. I mean, account account yeah. people need to, like customer success agents or whatever, they need to have those that's that skill as well. And I think customer, customer success, and, and I think this gets to, this is probably a really good segue to the employee training part mm -hmm. of video for internal comms. And maybe that's already what we've been talking about, but it's not just a manager taking responsibility for someone who works under them and their personal growth, but it's an organization taking ownership of their employees and wanting to be able to train their employees to seek out new career opportunities within the organization. Mm -hmm. um, want to um, make sure that everybody's on the same page with a product update, right? A, a video is a great way to, to show product updates or policy and procedure updates, right? You get to script it, you get to make the announcement once, mm -hmm. everybody hears the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're doing the showing and the telling instead of it just like be, sending out a memo. It can be watched again. Yes. Yep. It's not just a one-time thing. It's And I think that goes to the analytics too. I mean, if you're in if you're in HR, internal communications, a product team, I mean, if you're sending out some kind of company-wide announcement or to the account teams or customer success teams, hey, this is a new feature set that you're going to be getting questions mm -hmm. about. Here's how to answer them. You can watch, you can check your analytics and see what the people who got this video are watching. Mm -hmm. So if they're watching, you know, this one part about this, you know, this new dashboard or something, 
that could be a clue that either maybe you didn't explain it very well mm -hmm. because they feel like they have to go back or they're getting a lot more questions about, the about dashboard. it. Yeah. And so that's enough to be able to go to someone in customer success and say, hey, I noticed that a lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, you all are watching this section. Yeah. Is it because you're getting this question a lot? Did we not explain it well? What are we? So you get to kind of use that behavioral analytics instead of like this just being an adaptation to normal working environments. It's this is become video can make the video can be a management tool now. Yeah, as opposed to just something now we have to put up with. I mean, if you look if you look at it that way, like how can I leverage video? It's its ability to stay on script, its ability to show and tell, its ability to to personalize a message, um, and then its ability to be repeated to re, to repeat it, um, yeah, and distributed broadly. Mm -hmm. Like all of these things, these are these we're not stuck with video. We get video. <laughs> yeah, I think onboarding is is another. To me, when when I think about using video for new employee onboarding. So not customer onboarding, but employee onboarding. Mm -hmm. I think about growth stage startups. Those companies who just raised $50 million, $100 million, and they are tripling the size of their development staff or Coast sales team or whatever, yeah. right? And so you've got only so many people who can show these people how to log in and, and set up their payroll mm -hmm. and their direct deposit and how to register for benefits and all of those mundane tasks, how to request your MacBook, you know, be delivered to your home, how, you know, all these things put together a video or a library of videos that get sent to every single new employee that walks them through yeah. all of those things instead of having every new employee get on a video chat and have somebody actually walk them through. That is a repeatable process yep. that even in different departments, you could just create slightly different videos or slightly different libraries. If you have to show one person, you may as well show 500. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I, like you said, if I have to, hey, where do I find my health insurance information? I'm gonna do the login on my computer, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna record it, and don't ask me again. <laughs> and, I'm, and, well, and I'm gonna proactively send it to you on your first day. Yeah. And when you come and ask me, I'm going to remind you that it was in the video. Yeah, it's in the Knowledge Center <laughs> yeah, or whatever. It's, it's right here. You can find everything you need right here. And if you can't find it there, then you can reach out to sure. me. But, but you know, when, I mean, we've worked with clients who, who are hiring that fast. And the people responsible for onboarding just cannot scale. Mm -hmm. Because if, you're, if, you, if you don't have a mechanism to have, you know, pre-recorded, duplicatable, um, especially when it's something that is so procedure oriented, you know, to sign up for payroll, here are your steps to sign up for, you know, your health benefits here. You're like, to, cause all those things are in different channels and platforms and have different logins. And, and so as a new employee, you get to do it on your own time. And as a hiring manager or onboarding, you know, in HR or whatever you do it once and then everybody's doing it. And you can create an entire library of that kind of content. And it's not necessarily just onboarding. I mean, some of the bigger companies are, are putting a lot of money into video training, like a LinkedIn, like an internal LinkedIn learning mm -hmm. or, or oldlinda.com where their employees can learn how to do different things. And I mean, I, I even worked at a company where they weren't using video for this yet, but they had had, they put a lot of money into developing interactive career paths for their employees. So once you got to a certain point, you got to kind of start self-select, choose your own adventure mm -hmm. on how you wanted your career path to progress. I can only imagine 10 years later that they've, if they're still using that program, but they've integrated video to teach the skills that are necessary. So you could actually map out what kind of roles, positions, skill sets you needed to learn if you wanted to be a you know, vice president of product marketing in 15 years. And let's say there were, you know, 20 of those, you know, at, at each at each product or whatever. Um, or if you wanted to be a certain kind of sales rep or you wanted to be a regional sales manager, they had mapped out all of those those courses and started providing resources so that you can't, could self-educate. And and um, and so I just I, it's a great motivational tool, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Engage with us and find where you want to go next. Yeah. And, and it shows, uh, you know, I think that's, you get to see who, where, who's carrot or who has what carrot, right? If yeah. I see someone going down this path, 
I know that they have an interest in this particular. And so you get to support them in, right. And, and I mean, that goes, look, every, every salesperson who's had a bad sales manager will tell you that the best salespeople don't necessarily make the best sales managers. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you know that maybe one of your, you know, mid-level performing people who's just really good with other people wants to be a sales manager, don't worry about, you know, them exceeding, you know, hitting 150% of their quota every month, start grooming them for, you know, give, yeah. let them mentor uh, new employees yeah. for a while and make that a step in their journey to sales management. You know, they're not, they're not a failure because they're not hitting, you know, their quota or 150% of their quota or mm -hmm. whatever. But if they want to go to president's club and they want to be, you know, the top sales rep in the region, then you know that you don't have to groom them for management and they just want to make a ton of money on commissions selling this thing for the next 10 years. Yeah. And they're fine with that. Yeah. Um, you can, and I think that's, I think that's probably the, the broad stroke that we can paint all of this with is that it's about employee engagement and investing in your employees and giving them the opportunities to feel more connected to the company, whether it's through continuous updates from, from the executives, whether it's through uh, continuous communication with their immediate managers, whether it's through, you know, training and improvement opportunities from the HR team. All of this stuff is there to increase employee engagement, connection, which leads to increased employee retention. I don't Practical recall idea. the numbers, but it costs so much more to hire a new employee than it does to keep them for however long. I mean, yeah. every every company knows that it 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 it's more financially responsible to keep somebody for an extra year mm -hmm. than to hire a new employee and have them for a year. Um, and and these are just some of the ways that video can uh, can help increase that engagement and that connection and deepen those relationships. Um, and and a lot of it just kind of seems matter of fact now that didn't six or eight months ago mm -hmm. um, because we are always doing Zoom calls and and we have had to figure out how to manage our teams and collaborate within our teams using video. Um, but there are more ways. It doesn't just have to be Zoom calls. I guess that's kind of, I feel like I'm kind of wrapping up the episode um, now, but I think that's the big picture. It doesn't just have to be, you know, one-to-one you know, one -one or one-to-many live Zoom calls. Right. There's a whole lot of other ways to uh, to leverage video um, that that does all of those, you know, all of those things. Um, last, let's say um, somebody's listened to this and they've been living in a in a Uncle Rusty's trusty bunker for the past, you know, six months. Well, good for them. That's longer than the average uh, resident of, of one of those. <laughs> um, what tools would you point them to? I know there's a lot of options out there, and they all have their pluses and minuses. That sounds stupid. Pros and cons. Um, Advantages and disadvantages? No, I had it right the first time. Synonyms uh, and antonyms? <laughs> <laughs> um. So, you know, I, God bless Zoom for becoming a verb. Yeah. They've done the Kleenex and Xerox of the video chat industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I have found myself referring to Google Meet meetings, invites that I send, like to family and things like that, as Zoom meetings. Yeah. Like, I'll literally put, like, family reunion Zoom in a Google Meet invite yeah. <laughs> that yeah. goes to everybody. Um, so good for them. But... Um, you know, uh, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams. Um, I don't know. We use Google Meet. Um, but that's because it's most convenient we'll for use, us, right? Right. Is it, is, is it better? It's not necessarily. It, they're all basic. They all do the same thing. If yeah. you want to be able to customize your background, get them. Mm -hmm. And that'll work with, with any of them, right? Like like whether. if Yeah. If you want supreme functionality, mm -hmm, which is only available in beta right now mm -hmm. um that is that's going to give you the most op yeah. options and that and that's not a platform in itself it's like a plugin yeah for all of those um highly recommend checking out mm -hmm. we talked about them in the last M -M -M. episode mm -hmm. um we use vidyard go video for the asynchronous stuff mm -hmm. um we uh loom go video Gives us because of the account we have. I think uh, we're able to to see a lot with it because we mm -hmm. pay. But there's a free version. Yeah, 
Yeah, there is a free version. Which will more or less just give you notifications if well, somebody and, watches. And that's another thing, too, is is any um, any enterprising managers who, who listen to or watch this podcast, um, these aren't necessarily platforms or initiatives that you have to get buy-in from higher-ups on, right? Maybe like, IT. Uh, maybe. Yeah. But but a, a Google Chrome plugin like the free Go Video option, mm-hmm. uh, unless you have very aggressive, you know, sandboxing around your your browser, which some companies do, that's something that 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 you could just implement within just your team within your team, mm-hmm. and just start doing it, and then show your regional sales manager or whatever the additional results that you've gotten. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, some of these things are just kind of do it yourself, um, implement yourself, and you know, take the take the risk and, yeah. and just try it without having to go through a whole procurement, you know, conversation, um, whatnot. Um, Loom, Go Video, Bomb, 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 like a pew. like like pew pew. No, that's a. That's, uh, a, that, that, sh- that's a that's a gun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like like a. Yeah. But there's two of them. That's You're forgetting right. the second one. Yeah. yeah. I you know I would highly recommend the Ryan Carey episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked a lot about about being on camera and communicating on camera, and and I think there's a lot of tips mm-hmm. in there. If you're if you're gonna communicate with collaborators on your team or. Um, whoever you are, you might have some um, apprehension about being on video, even if it's just a one-to-one conversation. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of tips in that episode to um, uh, to pull from. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just it's everywhere now. That's the thing. I I, I don't. And so so many people I think are just either like putting up with it or surviving it. But like let's like yes, <laughs> be responsible for yourself and for your employees and make it better than it is like than it has to be yeah well and, I, and yeah and i think when i was talking earlier about the second wave i think that's a better way to describe the second wave the way i was using it is like this is the new normal like right. th- this is the closest we have to back to normal things aren't going to go back to exactly the way they were before so let's let's figure out how to use these tools that have been survival tools and make them thrival tools that's got to be a word yeah it is now thrival God, remember go to meeting? I mean, I remember when go to yeah. meeting felt like a. I mean, I think it's still a. You had to download like six things. Yeah, but <laughs> but I mean, think about how long ago that was a thing. I don't know how long ago. It feels like forever ago. It feels but like I don't remember, 10, 12 I don't remember years ago. Wait, is that Citrix? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, they bought go to meeting. Initial release of go to meeting was July two thousand four. All right. Um, anything else that you would like to say about video for internal comms? No. Okay. Uh, should we hear from our sponsor again? Yes. Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop. Remember tramp stamps? All we do is Trump stamps. That's right. Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop is your one stop shop for Trump related lower back tattoos. Want Bill Barr on your lumbar? Doral on your dorsal region? Mitch McConnell on your coccyx? Yes, we can. Wait, no. Um, um, MAGA? And don't worry about the quality of our work because we only hire the best people. Besides, if you ever become dissatisfied with your Trump stamp, just come back after four years and we'll forget it ever happened. Drain the Swamp Tattoo Shop, located in the strip mall across the street from Mar-a-Lago. Uh yeah, fun episode. Yeah, Rich, right. I like your shirt a lot. Uh, oh, thank you. This is a Stitch Fix. Ben's wardrobe provided by Stitch Fix. I mean, I pay for it. I don't send it to me. But um, this is because today's class picture day. Yes. <laughs> um, where's brought, that big box of combs? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, you remember I, that? I, I vaguely. I remember. I always thought it was so cool that I got a comb. To I got to go home with a comb. Yeah. On picture day. That came out of a big box of other combs. Yeah, and then at least five people got lice. Yeah. And be like. Yeah. 
Because yeah. for some reason, the rest of the day, you would like swap combs with people. Or chew on them. Or... Yeah. Um, yeah, so new headshots for us today. That's uh, that's why the nice shirts all around here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, Stitcher, Apple, wherever you consume, whatever that whole thing is. I think if I just say those words, it automatically fills in the rest. Um Keep those topic requests coming. Let us know if you agree or disagree with any of the points that we laid out today. Uh, let us know if you're using internal com- a video for internal comms. Uh, I'd love to hear some of the real-world applications that are maybe outside of what our discussion was today. Um, stick around next time. Uh, our episode will be about... Anyone? We could decide now. Fival? Fival. We will discuss Fival in our next episode. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching or listening to the Video Reformation podcast. I'm Ben. I'm Justin. Bye bye. So long. See, I thought we were done already. That's why I kind of the shirt. I wasn't trying to sneak it into the podcast. Really. I know what you were trying to do. What was that? Just that. And I flipped it around. Yeah. No, I thought we were done. No, no, we didn't do the whole other thing. No, we didn't do I, but I never do any of this, so I pretty no. much check out when I see it coming.